Today's video is one that I wish I'd had a chance to make two years ago when it was just me in a rickety old shed with no electricity. You see, at the time I had no power, so I couldn't buy all of the big tools. I had to live off solar lights and battery powered tools or hand tools. And that was great, but it did hold me back. So today we're gonna look at a potential solution, but for the woodworkers amongst you that don't need that, I'm also gonna batch out a load of mallets to see what design works best. And for those of you who watched the laser video, you'll know that I'm not exactly technology minded. So stick with me for two minutes while I read you through some stats. This is the AC200 Max Blue Eti power station. And I promise you, I'm not here to compare it with other brands. I'm not here to compare it with other sizes, shapes, anything like that. What I'm here to do, well, what I'm here to do is to batch out some mallets, if I'm honest with you. You see, there's one question that I want to answer. Can a hobbyist woodworker run the entirety of their hobby from just this? And here's a treat for limited time only. Our friends over at Bluetti have popped a discount code down below for 5% off for my subscribers. So if you're gonna buy, you may as well be subscribed. Not only are we gonna test the battery, but what I also wanna test is, can I make a better mallet? And for that, we're gonna to have to make a few. And if at any time I pique your interest in this, there's a link to the Bluetti website right down below. Take a look. Because let's be honest, it's entertaining seeing someone take all their tools out to a park and make something off the back of their truck or halfway up a mountain, but it's not a real life situation. A real life situation is that a woodworker likes to make a mallet. Hold tight, because here come the stats. This has got four outlets for a three prong plug, so you can run your four machines off it. You can charge your phone on top and you've got a load of different USB sockets as well. But for the woodworkers out there, these are the important four. That's power out. Inside this, you've got 2,048 watt hours. Every tool that you're gonna plug into it is gonna drain a certain amount of watt hours from it. So you gotta make sure that this has enough to cope with each one of those added up. It also has a surge of 4,800. So for instance, if you plug your table saw into it and it starts up without a soft start like mine, you gotta make sure that initial surge is covered. Spoiler alert, there were problems. Battery life? Well, you can charge this up to over 80%, three and a half thousand times. That's quite a life. And if this isn't enough, you can expand it by adding batteries into it. And that will triple the amount of watt hours you can get out of it. So you can get the power out, but how do you keep topping this up? The useful ones for yourself and myself are probably going to be AC. You can plug it straight in, charge it up, and it'll take you about five to five and a half hours to get this thing back up to maximum capacity from zero or you can buy a set of four solar panels that fold out, stick them outside, plug this in, and you can charge it up using nothing but the sun. And technically that's free. He says free. Now that leads to the second question we're gonna address. Can a hobbyist woodworker really run everything for free? Let's put that to the test too. On the perfect sunny day, it can take as little as three to three and a half hours to fill this up using the solar panels. Or combine the two. Plug it into the solar panels, plug it into the mains, and you could do it in two to two and a half hours if you are really, really on a time crunch to get this back up and running. Other ways to charge it up, well, you could plug it into your car, onto a generator, or straight onto a, another battery. And for all of those options, you get all the leads you're gonna need. Now, there's a couple of downsides to this, and there's the cost to consider. But what I wanna do first is get building, because that's why we're here. So let's make some mallets. Making things is simple. You only need a few things. Firstly, materials. Secondly, tools. Thirdly, a limited amount of skills. The reason I've chosen mallets is because you can batch them out and the skill part is fairly low. So it suits me nicely. Materials, sapili, oak, bit of glue. Tools, well, back in the old shed days, I only had two types of tools. I had my hand tools, most of which you see on the back wall here. Now they don't take any power. So I've made a rule for myself in this test Steer away from those wherever possible. And then there's the other types of tools, which you see in every single video, and that's the battery operated ones. There's test number one. Can the battery keep me going all day today, building my mallets? But power to your table saw is not everything you're gonna need. Light. What you are looking at right now is one light. It's just one LED panel, cheaply bought off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. You get the fixtures so that you can run them in series and just have one plug to power them all. What this means is from just one of the power sockets on this power station, 
you can light your entire workshop. But let's be honest, videos look better with all the lights on. So I will calculate how much those run at and I will take the percentage off at the end if there's anything left in the battery. So we've laid out our test, our battery is full of power. I think it's time to go. Two plugs have been taken already. One is by the dust extraction and one is by the table saw. Dust extraction you can see on the remote plug with the white backing. What you can hear now is me turning on the table saw. That's right, the battery was tripped. What I was saying before about surge, well, the two tools together, they're too thirsty. You can't use them simultaneously. You can if you get something a little bit less powerful, but my DeWalt table saw is clearly too thirsty. I'm not gonna get discouraged though, because we can still do this test with just a table saw and a mask. As I set about this build, you might be asking yourself, why mallets? And in all honesty, I enjoyed making the mallet from the last video that you can see there. The only thing is the handle's a bit long. So I need to experiment as to what the perfect length of handle is and the perfect style of head. And I've had a couple of ideas that I wanna throw in there to test things that I've seen online. Now, whenever you're batching something out, the least amount of times you move the fence on your table saw or you raise the blade, the, the more efficient you're going to get. As both sides of the heads are cut to five degrees, all I need to do is make a cut on one end, flip the board, measure the distance of the head and then cut again. So I'll have opposing five degree angles. And then I just run through each board. I'm forcing myself to use this table saw as much as I can through this build, even on jobs that I wouldn't necessarily do, such as cutting the slight recess in the handle where it sits inside the head of the mallet. Now, normally I'd use hand tools for this or a jigsaw, but I tried the table saw with the stop block here, as you can see, camera angles were messed up because the camera was technically on the table saw, which was vibrating, but also the finish wasn't great because of the curve of the blade. So I did what every YouTubing woodworker does. I got out my jigsaw and then I set my camera at the worst possible angle to see what it was doing. Fortunately for me, it's fairly obvious and none of this actually drained any power from the battery. So there's a bonus there. Now for the internals, I freestyled this a little bit. Some of the mallets, the handles in the middle and they're really easy to cut. And then some of them, I've moved the handle forwards and backwards. And you're gonna see why I'm doing that a little bit later. All of these internals need a five degree cut followed by a 90 degree cut. So what I did was I worked off each end of the board. So I did two cuts on the one angle and then two on the next. Then you're halving the adjustments on the miter gauge. And as you can see here, some of the handles were set two thirds of the way along, some were set centrally. Batch number one done, three mallets, 14% battery usage. Probably only about half an hour to 40 minutes of work. So we go again. For the second batch, I made the mallets exactly the same. And to save messing it up on the table saw, you can see I cut the wedges again with the jigsaw. Cue more fantastic camera angles. You've got to love the close-up of hairy knuckles followed by the close-up of the battery. That's the bit woodworkers want to see. Now, normally I would clean up the heads of these mallets by hand. Just use the plane for all of it because it's pleasing. But I decided to go out of my comfort zone and plane one side to get it flat. So then I could run it along the fence and use the table saw to do the other side. So I raised the blade up to the height of the mallet head and had a sketchy moment alarm go off. It didn't feel right. So I halved the blade and I ran it through twice, flipping it in between. So it did the same job with just a far less blade showing. What I did think worked really well and felt a lot safer was clamping the head to my miter gauge at the five degree angle so I could clean up the faces of the mallet. And then I wanted to work on the style that had intrigued me. I've seen a lot of makers making round headed mallets. Mark Dana makes some incredible ones for his channel. And I got thinking, well, what if you want the best of both worlds? And this is why some of these don't have a centrally placed handle. So after marking them up and setting the blade to 45 degrees, keeping the five degree angle on the miter gauge, but having it on the other side of the blade, I just removed some of the waste. That still leaves an awful lot of hand planing or sanding. So I've opted for this. This is an old technique I used before I had my new workshop. With the spinning disc on the drill, I'm sure it doesn't do the drill any good, but what it does do is remove a lot of wood very quickly using cheap 100 grit sandpaper. Each mallet took five minutes to remove the rest of the wood and get a nice smooth finish. And it worked really well on the end grain of the opposing side of the mallet head too. Sanding, well, sanding you don't wanna see. And then I used these spinning flappy wheels on the same drill to shape the handle. What I will say is if you get these cylinders instead, those remove wood a lot quicker. I'd seen something that Cam over at Blacktail Studios did years ago, where he did a small mallet similar to one of mine, and he actually put a thumb grip in it so that you've got more control when you're doing more finer detailed work. And that looked really clever. 
cue the cut saw burrs, my die grinder, and a whole battery. Okay, I don't mind admitting that I am very, very surprised. This still has 72% battery life. I've used 28%, I've done five hours of building. I've made six mallets from start to finish. That could have been anything. I've done over 150 separate cuts on the table saw, but we do have to take into account the lights and recharging the batteries if we're going to make this a fair test. So 72% suddenly becomes 40, which is still pretty good. And that, well, that's the end of day one. But let's quickly step away from the battery and talk mallets. For a little bit of time with the die grinder, that extra little thumb hole for using this for intricate work on both sides has made this my favorite little mallet. Long handle is a little bit too long. Medium handle, perfect for walloping. Flat heads work best on a medium handle. The rounded heads at the front are lovely but the whole mallet becomes a bit back heavy due to the length of the handle. So if you're going to make a medium handled one, I think flat ends at five degrees works perfectly. For the shorter handle mallets, I think that having a larger head is absolutely fine, but I wish instead of making two identical ones, I'd made one a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. The rounded and the flat contrast with the thumb holders for a small mallet is absolutely spot on. So. For my woodworking going forwards, it's going to be that and a medium handled mallet, unless I've really got to give something a good wallop. Right, back to the battery. Before the test, I mentioned some downsides. So let's do the downsides and then let's try and charge this battery up for free. Let's see how that goes. The first downside to this is a fairly obvious one. If you're climbing a mountain and camping at the top, you're not taking this with you. This weighs 28.1 kilograms. It's okay to move between your house and your workshop, but you're certainly not gonna to want to take it further afield without putting it in the back of your car. But how much will it cost you to bring electricity into your workshop? If you bought it today, you're looking at spending 1,249 pounds. It's been reduced down from 1799. Okay, we could end the test there because the battery got me through a day's worth of building. Well, five and a half hours anyway. And it's still got 40%, but we've got to test the charging of it. And to do that, we need to drain it. So let's do that. All I've done is plug nothing but the table saw in and I've got a load of pallet wood that I want to square one edge and then square the other. And there you have it. 49 boards, cut twice, uses 40% of the battery. That's 98 cuts. Which means pretty much overall, we did over 250 cuts on the life of the battery. And we included percentage power for the lights and for charging up our batteries. So now we've got to charge it back up. And this is the bit that I'm a bit more skeptical about. Because don't get me wrong, you could be like Badger's Workshop and you could go and take this up to your house and you could charge it back up and it solves every problem that you have electricity wise. But we asked at the start, can you do it for free? These are the solar panels that Bluetti gave me to go with their power station. Normally these come in at 799 pounds, currently reduced down to 569 pounds. Now you'll be happy to know that these are significantly more portable than the power station and setting them up is an absolute breeze. So let's see whether we can actually charge this up. What I'm gonna do now is whiz through the two weeks it took me to charge this battery by solar power. As you see here in the UK, we're not really getting a summer, not yet. So the first day I put it out, I put it out for an hour and a half in the morning on what was a intermittent cloudy day and I gained seven percent battery. Because the wattage intake you can see here fluctuated between 120 and 20. And that's not a lot. I tried again a week later. Same result. I got 8% this time from the same amount of time. The next day, cloudy day with intermittent sun, I left it out there for about six or seven hours and I got about 36% put into it. To say I was discouraged by the solar panels, be a bit of an understatement at this stage. So let's sum up my experience with the Bluetti power station. Let's just talk functionality first. The actual machine itself, ease of use, number of outlets, usability, all of that's simple. It's great. There was nothing that baffled me and I'm not really particularly tech savvy. As for the biggest downside to the actual machine itself, I don't think you can get past it. If you want the big capacity of battery, you're gonna have the weight. 
The first question, can a hobbyist woodworker run their hobby off this battery? Absolutely, yes you can. You may need to do a bit of extra homework as to what the capacity of the battery can drive, but if my test is anything to go by, if you're a hobbyist woodworker and you're struggling and being held back by lack of power, this is a consideration. If you have a secondary use, say you go camping a lot, you've got a caravan, a camper van, suddenly this becomes a lot more viable. It would be remiss of me to say that this is free power. Numbers for numbers. Every time I run this battery down from 100% down to zero, I'm saving approximately £1.90. But if I charge it at the mains, it negates the saving. So the only way of getting the real saving is to use the solar panels. But sadly, here in the UK, with the short summer that we have and the cloudy days that sometimes affect it, this is not free power. So big conclusion, if you're a hobbyist woodworker out there and lack of electricity is holding you back, click on the link down in the description. Take a look. There's plenty of different sizes and capacities. I'm sure there'll be something that will suit your needs. And please don't forget the discount code down below in the description because 5% is a decent saving. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If the battery is of no interest, then I hope you enjoyed the mallet making, enjoyed the whole thing. Please click the like button, subscribe, and then that's gonna be a good video to move on with. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over there.